Hello friends, as I've told you in last video, today I'll discuss about the buoyant force. Before looking into the buoyancy, first of all, I would like to discuss the prime nature of fluid, that is, pressure of fluid always acts perpendicular to the surface. And as I have already discussed, that pressure is always a function of H. Friends, first of all, we should know about the pressure distribution diagram. Let's say there is a retaining wall and we have to see the pressure distribution diagram for this retaining wall. By the nature of pressure distribution, as we know pressure is a function of H, say H is changing by 1 centimeter and rho value for water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. If my scale representation is say for first value p is rho times h then rho is 1 gram per centimeter cube and 1 centimeter if it is the height then pressure will become 1 gram per centimeter square now if 1 centimeter scale is represent 1 gram per centimeter square pressure then at every 1 centimeter pressure would be 1 multiplied by that depth so we will start with zero value pressure would be zero at h is equals to one p would be one gram per centimeter square so let's plot the pressure distribution diagram so guys this is the pressure distribution diagram friends here one thing i would like to tell you that it's a very important law pressure of fluid always acts perpendicular to the surface if i will ask you to plot a pressure distribution diagram for this type of container so what you have to do first of all you have to disintegrate all these three surface and as we know pressure always act perpendicular to the direction of the surface for this vertical wall pressure distribution would be triangular in nature what about this segment say this segment is one this is two and this is three so if you see the pressure distribution for this horizontal line as h is constant so you can see at every point pressure will be fixed and that is constant but what about this inclined line as we know the pressure always act perpendicular to the surface and it also varies along with the h value so if you'll see it will form a triangle these are the pressure distribution diagram for three different segments friends after seeing the pressure distribution diagram let's move to a buoyant concept that what is buoyant force how it will act and why it will act. Say an object is submerged in a water. This is a three dimensional body and as we know pressure will always act perpendicular to the surface. Water pressure will act in all the surface. Say the dimension of the object is in this direction it is C. The depth of this object is A and say width is B. Now at the top of the surface say this height is H at the top of the surface pressure magnitude would be gamma times H and at the bottom of the surface pressure would be gamma times H plus this additional depth that is A. What about these two points you can see because H in both the segments is same hence the pressure would be neutralized from both the direction like this and there will be a pressure difference between top and bottom surface and if you will see the magnitude of the pressure difference you can see at the top pressure is gamma times h and at the bottom say this is pb and at the top it is pt pb is gamma times h plus a similarly if you will see the force acts on the top surface it would be gamma h multiplied by top area and top area is b multiplied by c so it would be b into c and at the bottom surface because pressure is gamma times h plus a hence force would be force at the bottom would be pressure b multiplied by again b into c and if you see the force magnitude it would be gamma times h plus a into b. Now if I'll try to find out the value of force difference between bottom and top fiber it would be bc multiplied by gamma multiplied by h plus a minus h and here h and h will cancel out and you will get a b c multiplied by gamma and you can see a b c is nothing but the volume of the object. Hence and difference of force between bottom and top fiber is nothing but it is called 
buoyant force i have computed buoyant force is the volume or i can say submerged volume it is indicated by v dash submerged volume multiplied by gamma value or i can write gamma is nothing but density of fluid multiplied by g and multiplied by submerged volume this is the buoyant force will act upon a submerged object friends here we can see the important conclusion about the buoyant force that buoyant force does not depends upon the density of object here we can see the buoyant force is a function of density of fluid only and also buoyant force is independent of the height of submerged friends let's discuss an important application of the buoyant force you all must have studied in your schooling the eureka moment of archimedes where he did find the impurities of the crown of his king which was made up of gold first of all let's see the important application of archimedes principle let's say we have to find out the density of any object we don't know how to determine the volume of an irregular object say this is an object having irregular shape if you have to find out the density of this object say it is very easy density is defined as mass by volume mass we can easily find it out but what about volume it is difficult to find out the volume in order to find out the volume we will take the help of the buoyant principle as we know buoyant force is density of fluid multiplied by g multiplied by submerged volume and if i'll have to see the buoyant mass it would be density of fluid multiplied by submerged volume say if you weigh this object in air say 2000 g and if you'll weigh this object in water say it is 1500 g then buoyant mass would be 2000 minus 1500 g so it is the net loss inside the water and it would be 500 g this buoyant mass will act upon this object hence this buoyant mass we can equate with with the formula which we have so here you can see if we have the buoyant mass that is 500 g and if we know the density of fluid say it is water say 1 g per cm cube we can easily find out the submerged volume of an object so here we can calculate it is nothing but 500 cm cube so now we can find out the density of object and it is 2000 g and we have to divide it by 500 cm cube so it would be 4 gram per cm cube this would be the density of this object and if you have to find out the specific gravity and we can compute this value as density of object by density of any standard fluid say water so in this case if the density of object is 4 gram per cm cube and density of water is 1 gram per cm cube so i will get the specific gravity of the object as friends there are number of application available of buoyant mass or we can say buoyant force one of the important application we use in marshall mix design in the computation of a specific gravity of different aggregates for the optimum content of bitumen design friends what we have studied that if any object is submerged in fluid it would be subjected to buoyant force and there will be a loss of weight or mass and as i asked you in my last video that air is also a fluid and we all submerged in it then why do we ignore it once we measure our weight so let's see some competition behind it say a man is having mass say 55 kg i am saying mass here because as we all know that weight is having unit in newton and as we have seen that all object who are submerged in fluid subjected to buoyant force because we all submerged in surrounding air hence the buoyant force or buoyant mass will act upon this human being would be density of fluid multiplied by submerged volume guys in order to know the volume of any human body we should know the density of human body and the density of human body is approx 985 kg per meter cube or we can say it is approx 1000 kg per meter cube which is also the density of water and as we know the density is mass by volume volume of human body 
say I am going to take the maximum mass say it is 100 kg it is above standard and the density is approx 1000 kg per meter cube so we can say volume of a healthy person is going to be 0.1 m cube I am going in higher side so now again move to this problem if the submerged volume of any human body is 0.1 m cube in that case bound mass would be density of fluid in this case density of air I have to take it is 1.2 kg per meter cube multiplied by it would be 0.1 meter cube then I will get 0.12 kg so here you can see here the mass of any human body is 55 kg and the bound mass acting upon the human body is 0.12 kg which is negligible as compared to 55 kg in percentage it would be approx 0.2% which is negligible hence in calculation of the weight of a human body we generally ignore the significance of bound mass but at the same time we cannot ignore it if the volume is more or we can say if the density of fluid is more say in the case of water we cannot just ignore it this is an important value for bound mass in the next segment of fluid mechanics learning through example series we will see how you can correlate the submergence of titanic with the bions problem and is it possible for a baby to lift a car and it's a very simple question what is the relationship between diameter and radius is it two times of r four times of r or eight times of r you think it's a silly question but we will discuss it later till then please watching recon civil academy videos thank you